What's up everybody? Thank you for joining me again on Teak and Builds. I'm Ty Campbell and we are just about to throw some electronics in our Techno EV4 10.2 10 scale four wheel drive electric buggy that we put together in the last episode. We're going to cover installing an RSX Pro 110 scale modified brushless speed control, a Gen 4 6.5 turn modified motor, and the Tekken T190 steering servo. So by the end of today's episode, we're going to have this car from sliding chassis to a running chassis. We're going to mount up some wheels and tires. I got some goodies from Proline, and then we're going to cut out our wing, get a practice body painted, wrap this thing up so that we can take it down south and hit the Eagle Hills Raceway track for some much needed practice. So let's get our electronics equipment out. We'll check each one of those out. We'll get them in our car. We'll get this thing running by the end of today's episode. So checking out everything we have in our RSX Pro box, we have the RSX Pro itself right here, our fan shroud with all the necessary hardware and the spacers and the cooling fan is included. Comes with a couple nine inch strips of 12 gauge wire that are color coded and the third channel communication wire. This is so you can use the adjustable drag brake feature via your radio and it's also the hot wire adapter if you have a hot wire 2.0 to plug right into that fan port. Now the most important accessory in our RSX Pro kit is the power capacitor. It is in this little bag with the double-sided tape and some zip ties. It needs to go on your ESCs plus and minus battery posts. It is marked the little blue half moon is the negative side or if you have the red version, the red half moon is the negative side. This needs to go on there first and then you can add whatever cat pack you wanna add after the fact but this guy has a very important job to do, so it needs to go right on those positive negative battery posts. We've got the user manual. Please, please read this. I spend a lot of time on these manuals. A lot of the information and questions I get asked are in there, as well as on the website at teamteakin.com on your respective product pages. This little guy is just an update that is saying if you have a hot wire, it's good to make sure you have the most recent version. We have no idea how long these guys have been sitting around, so we might have new versions that come out. You wanna to go to teamteakin.com, get the latest version of your hot wire, flash your ESC just to make sure you have the most current firmware in there because we're always releasing fixes and new updates. This shows how to hook your speed control into your hot wire device and you get some sweet Tegan decals. The RSX Pro is our 110 scale flagship modified racing ESC. It's wrapped in a billet aluminum heatsink housing. It's a 210 amp per phase rated speed control. Also has an HD high voltage BEC, so you can pick six volts or 7.4, depending on how fast you want your servo to be. It is compatible with all three versions of our hot wire, the one, the two, and the 3.0. The only difference with the 3.0 is that it enables Bluetooth so that you can program on an Android or iPhone compatible device wirelessly without having to touch your ESC. This is gonna be the perfect ESC for our EB410.2. We're gonna run a 6.5 turn Gen 4. So let's go ahead and check that Gen 4 out now. Now I know everybody is just chomping at the bit for this Gen 4 motor. Good news is they are shipping. You'll see them in stock very soon, probably by the time this video is uploaded. This is our Gen 4 6.5 turn modified series motors. So our modified series are gonna go from 9.5 turn down to 5.5 turn. Anything below that is gonna be our Eliminator series for the no prep drag racing crowd. Anything above that is gonna be our Spec R series from 10.5 all the way up to 25.5 spec motors. Now the Gen 4 is a completely new design. We took everything we learned from the Gen 1, 2, and 3, basically threw all of that out the window and started with a completely fresh platform. Everything about this motor is different other than the bearing sizes and your rotors from your Gen 3 are compatible so you can swap those back and forth. But we have brand new high strength rotors out of a new material for the Gen 4s as well as some different tuning options that weren't available on the Gen 3. We've got brand new HD solder tabs, new Hall effect sensors, new sensor board. All the externals are different from the can machining to the weight. It's a tiny bit lighter than your Gen 3 counterparts and it is a beast of a motor. So far, I am extremely happy with the way this motor has turned out and we put a lot of time into developing this new Gen 4 platform. In our box, we have the Gen 4 motor. You'll also get some shims. This is for shimming your rotor. There are front shims and rear shims just to dial in that position, get it right where you want it to be in the stack. 
There is a sensor wire clip right here for securing your sensor wire to the back of the motor. And then we've got one of our flat wire 200 millimeter sensor cables. Last but not least, our steering servo. I'm gonna go with a T190. This is a full size standard 110 scale servo. And I wanna go full size because this isn't a stock car. I'm not really worried about that little bit of weight savings that we get with a low profile. And the gear trains in the standard size servos are a little bit thicker. So the gears are a little bit stronger, gonna be a little bit more impact resistant. And since we're gonna be running these cars on big eight scale tracks, sending it off huge gaps, I just wanna have a stronger servo in here. That, and I already put a T190 in my EB. So for Prez's car, I'm gonna set his up identical to mine. Now the T190 is one of our new digital position encoding servos. These are extremely precise, extremely accurate, consume a lot less power than some other servos will. They're also programmable with the Tekken Hotwire device on your PC. So you can set things like feel and soft start, there's alarms, there's lots of cool stuff. And we've got one of those videos on our YouTube channel. Go check out all the amazing parameters you can adjust on the Tekken servos with the hot wire. Now the T190 is gonna supply about 180, 185 ounces of torque at six volts. We're gonna run it on the RSX Pro's HVBEC. So we should see more around 240 ounces. That's gonna be plenty for this car and we're gonna see speeds around 0.06, 0.07 seconds, so plenty fast to throw our front tires around as well. So in our packaging, we've got our T190 servo, we've got a Vector 20 millimeter machined aluminum servo horn. This is cut out of 7075 aluminum. There are also a bunch of other optional horns in this bag, as well as some mounting grommets if you choose to use them. There's also a plastic horn with an aluminum collar that is actually a pretty good lightweight plastic horn. This is just a little bit about the servo, all the part numbers and the horns, how to program it with your hot wire and some warranty information. So that is our electronics. That is the Tekken trifecta that we're gonna throw into our EB410. Let's get the chassis out. We'll stick some of this stuff down, get that servo mounted. We'll start soldering, get this thing running here pretty soon. First item to go in is gonna be our Gen 4 six and a half turn. Now we're gonna plug our sensor harness in just so we can reach it. It's easier to do it out of the car. And then we're gonna remove this bottom end bell screw and put the sensor wire clip together. This holds the sensor wire more firmly in place. So it has less of a chance coming out while we're actually out on the track running. Now we can put our motor mount plate on the front end cap of our motor. Now we can slide our motor plate with our motor attached into the motor mount in the chassis. I've got these really cool brushless motor screws from Lunsford. They are titanium and they have kind of a shoulder washer built into the head. They're gonna work perfect for holding our motor mount. Now we're gonna throw our pinion gear on. I'm gonna go with a 20 tooth for this motor and we're gonna run the ESC in spec mode so there's no timing and we just left the stock 30 degrees on the end bell. Then we wanna set our gear mesh. We wanna check this in three or four different spots around the spur gear just to make sure there aren't any tight spots because spur gears are never perfectly round. So the Gen 4 is now in our car. We've got our 20 tooth pinion on there and we set our gear mesh. We also installed a shorter 100 millimeter flat wire sensor wire. You can get those at store.teamteeking.com. We've got flat versions and jacketed versions in various lengths from 100 millimeter up to 275. I went with the shortest option because the ESC is right next to the motor in this car and there's not a whole lot of space we have to cover with that wire. So the shortest one is gonna be the best. So now we're gonna move on to getting our T190 installed in the car hook up our servo linkage and all that good stuff, and then we'll move on to getting our RSX Pro in and solder this thing up. So we're installing a full-size T190, so you're gonna need the full-size servo option from the kit, and you can press the servo down into here and feed the servo wire through the other side to where our receiver's gonna go, and use the included hardware to lock it down to the servo mount. 
Now I'm gonna use our 20 millimeter crowbar clamping horn. I like this one better than our vector because it has a clamp design. And I also figured out how to use a five millimeter washer spacer on our arm so that our ball stud drops to the proper length so that our steering link has the right geometry. Everything clears nice underneath this factory RC top deck and our steering arm is relatively flat. Now to tighten our servo horn, you wanna tighten the two external clamping screws first because this clamps it to the spline. And then you'll wanna use this little lock washer along with an M3 six millimeter length socket cap screw or you can use the included screw with the servo. I like to use the M3s because it gives me a 2.5 drive tip and I know that I'm not gonna strip that out near as easily. All right, our T190 is now in. Our wire's a little bit on the long side. I might shorten that, but for now, we'll just bundle it behind the ESC. And I decided to use our crowbar arm just because I like the clamping design better than the press fit vector. And it is a thicker arm, so it's gonna be stronger than our vector. We just have to put that one little spacer in there so that we get our geometry correct so that we don't run into our factory RC top deck up here because it is lower than the factory one. So when you're installing these servos, make sure you power them up first to get them to find their natural center and then you can just throw it in the car, hook everything up and then if you have a hot wire, you can actually set the center point and fine tune that. There's a video on how to do that, go check that out. It is our servo programming video on our DIY section on the Tekken Clinic part of the YouTube channel. Now we're gonna install our RSX Pro ESC and before we stick it down in the car, we're gonna go ahead and tin all of our solder posts. That'll get it ready to accept our wires when we do those here in a bit. And we're also gonna stick the power capacitor on and get that sensor harness plugged in since the sensor harness plug is right on the back. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to reach once we mount it in our car. So to prep our RSX Pro, we're just gonna tin all the solder posts. Make sure you have a good clean iron, make sure it's hot. I use a Heiko 936, it's a 65 watt iron and it solders very nicely. Then we need to make sure we get that power capacitor on there, double, triple check the polarity. The blue half moon or the red half moon is the negative side. So we attach that to the post hanging off the back like this, make sure it's on nice and tight. Now, I like to clean the bottom of the ESC housing off with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This gets rid of any oils, and then we can use our 3M double-sided tape on the bottom, and this is what we're gonna secure it to our chassis with. Now I'm gonna plug the sensor harness in, making sure it's fully seated, because we don't want that to pop out. And we'll find a spot to stick this down, and again, I clean the chassis off with isopropyl rubbing alcohol before sticking anything down, so you get a nice good bond with your servo tape. Then I'm gonna take my switch and route it around our receiver and just tack it with a little bit of CA to the side mud guard. Make sure you plug your ESE into the throttle channel. The saying is one to turn, two to burn. So channel one is your steering, channel two is your motor. Everything looks nice and tidy in here. I've got a little bit of wire length behind there, but no big deal, I might shorten those later on. Now to prep our motor, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the ESC posts and just tin them up with a clean hot soldering iron and some 60-40 rosin core. To actually connect our wires to our posts, I always like to heat the wire first, heat the post, bring them both together, and they will flow in usually two to three seconds. So if you can't hold it this close, your solder joint is too hot and you've got way too much heat in there, you might wanna let it cool and come back at it again. Same thing on our motor side. We're gonna heat the wire first after it's tinned. Heat that motor tab, bring them both together. It's gonna to flow immediately and I'm not burning my fingers holding it this close, which is super nice. Soldering is one of those things that just takes practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. And I can't stress enough that prep work is everything. You don't have to use flux, but you can if you want because it will flow the solder easier. But 6040 rosin core flows pretty well. And there are some other brands out there that flow well too, like the 6337. Now I just solder up the battery connections using the help of my Jigs Up jig. 
and then I like to mark these with some Sharpie just to make darn sure I don't plug this thing in backwards on accident. Double, triple check before you plug your battery in for the first time that you've got it right. That's a big mistake that you don't want to make because the ESCs have no reverse polarity protection. So that's it, all of our soldering is done. Got all of our wires ran. Ran our battery wires to our five millimeter bullets. Now I ran to the back of the car instead of the front just because of the way our speed control is turned in the chassis. So I wanted to be able to get some good slack in our battery wire so nothing's pulling on anything and it's too tight. We got some give in all of our motor wires, so that's good. We wanna make sure those aren't too tight so we're not yanking on anything as the car flexes when we're going off jumps, hitting things on the track. So now that we've got everything done, we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy on, see where everything's at, and then we'll set up our servo, calibrate our speed control, throw in a bass tune, and we'll be just about ready to hit the track. Now that we've got all of our electronics installed in our EB410.2, we're gonna power this guy up and then we're gonna calibrate our speed control. You need to do this so that the ESC sees the full range of signal coming from your radio. Now some radios, you might have to reverse the throttle channel before you perform the radio calibration. So if it won't accept either full throttle or full brake signal, you'll probably have to reverse it like on Futabas and there's a few other brands that you might have to do this. So to calibrate, it's super easy. We're just gonna power on, press and hold that mode button, run through calibration real quick, and then we'll move on to setting up our servo. In our calibration mode, we're just gonna press and hold the mode button. As soon as it starts flashing, it's gonna look for neutral first. It accepted, now we need to input full throttle. Pull and hold full throttle. It took that, full brake. Full brake is accepted. We're now calibrated and ready to drive. Now we need to set up the endpoints on our steering servo and it's important to do this so that you don't stress the servo. If you're turning it too far and it's actually mechanically binding the steering, that's gonna cause a lot of excess heat, premature servo wear, and you're probably gonna burn one out eventually. So first we're gonna turn to the left and it looks like right away ours is actually backwards and we can reverse this in the hot wire or we can reverse it on our radio. So now that we have the steering reversed, we're gonna set our endpoints and this will normally be in servo setup or travel or something along those lines in your radio. So go ahead and find that in your menu and then we're just gonna turn full lock to the left and you can see that this is actually binding everything and tweaking the chassis. So we need to decrease the left travel Get it down to where it's not buzzing anymore. Now we'll do the right side. And that looks pretty good. And we'll fine tune that when we're actually got wheels on the car and we're out on the track. Now you can set your endpoints in your hot wire and then that permanently sets them in the servo so that you can't go past those. Then you have greater resolution of adjustment on your radio. Now we have our RSX Pro set up. We have our servo set up. Everything is ready to go on this car. Now all we gotta do is throw some wheels and tires on. I've got TLR 22.4 wheels for this car. They're the proper offset for the front and the rear are gonna fit as well. And then I went with Proline Whole Shot 3.0s on the rear and Whole Shot 2.0s on the front. So these should be pretty good for our Eagle Hills Raceway track and the track we got here at Tekin. So let's throw these on. We'll get our wing on, we'll slap a body on and this thing will be done. The wing setup on this car is pretty cool. You've got zero, five millimeter, and 10 millimeter height options off this standoff. I just went with the five to go right in the middle, see how we like that. And then I cut the rear wicker bill about halfway down to that middle line. The stock body looks killer, and Brian Phillips, one of our team drivers, knocked this paint job right out of the park for me. I love the way this looks. And Jay at SOR Graphics did a killer job on my new decals as well. Now, I know I said this was the Prez's car, but I don't have his bodies yet. That's why I'm showing mine, so sorry, Jim. This build went awesome. Everything fit together perfectly, and I'm really excited to hand this car over to the Prez, see what he thinks of it. So that's a wrap on our Techno EB4 10.2 build. I'm gonna hand this car off to the Prez. I'm gonna keep my body and my wheels and tires, though. He's a yellow wheel guy, and his body's gonna look a little bit different than mine. 
Hope everybody enjoyed this series. Next up, we're gonna take it down to the valley. We're gonna hit the Eagle Hills Raceway track and get some practice in for the Idaho State Championships held by Wildy Events in July. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I think Prez is really gonna like this car. We'll get it dialed in. We'll shoot some more footage while we're down there and we'll check out all the adjustments that we're gonna make on our ESC as well as our car to dial it in for our, our racing surface. So if you liked the video today, click that like button, share with your friends so they can check it out too, and don't forget to subscribe to the Team Tekken Racing YouTube channel. We got another techno build coming up pretty soon. We're gonna dive headfirst into an EB48 2.0 8 scale build and build a clone of the 8 scale buggy that I already built for myself, again, for the Prez. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Tekken Builds. I'm Ty Campbell, and we'll see you next time.